Right. Isn't that Doc's job? Isn't he? Wasn't he high? He, he makes seven million bucks a year. Right. It's not just the coach. It's also to recruit. Well, I think the, the thing that happened there, the way at least the way I understand it, was he opted out of his deal, which he shouldn't have, and then maybe he had some injuries, he had a bad knee, and so he was going to make less money per season if he came to the Celtics. Now, over the life of the deal, he probably could have made it up, but if you're the agent, it makes you look bad because your your client opted out, and now you're going to take less. So that's bad on your agent. So they felt it was very agent driven that Wes didn't come here because it was gonna. He had to save face. So first. guys who want to, uh, I mean, it, the only appeal would be Doc or Rondo. I mean, obviously I'll tell you the- what. If you had West to start the season and you had all these other guys healthy, which you know one by one they've gone away. Jo doesn't. I could care less about that. Honestly, I have feelings about him. But Wilcox, if you still had him, Jeff Green. I mean, you actually would have been had a chance to maybe make a run at this. Hmm. But you're just so thin up front now, I just don't see how that's possible. But I go back to, you're talking about all these guys choosing other places. How did they, again, if you put together never the new big Boston. three, if you put together that and you win an NBA championship, how did you not make that last step of making this a desirable place because, for guys to Because go? the guy that ended up saying yes, KG, because he had a right to, he had yep. to okay that trade to make it happen and they had to extend him. Think about him. He's a different sort of cat, isn't he? So he spent most of his beginning of his career in what market? Minnesota. Sure. Okay? So he doesn't have the same criteria that some of these other guys. He's not a guy like Dwight Howard that needs a lot of endorsement opportunities, that needs all that washing over him. He's not that kind of guy. The the original big three, go back to that, Larry Bird, Mikhail Parrish, none of those guys were, were big time they weren't, you know, of their era, I would say Magic Johnson was the guy that you saw on the 7-Up commercials, and that, that stuff mattered to them. Kevin McHale could care less so about that stuff. So this is hopeless. It's not hopeless. No, it's it not is. hopeless. It isn't. It because is. Thank you, Jackie. It's not hopeless. <laughs> it's, you're not going to win a championship this year, and you're going to have to rebuild. So define hopeless. Uh, right? I mean, that's, you, you don't see how it can, they, say, get back to the finals. How about that? Get back about to the, the Eastern finals. Conference finals. I think it's a long shot this year. Sorry. And then just, a long shot next year. I'll tell you why. You I'll tell you why. There are no free agents. Oh, no, it won't be for a while. Yeah, you're not going right. to get that for a while. You're going to have to rebuild through the draft and you, you take those pieces and trade for them the way they did the last time. And you, you hope you get lucky. Now, listen, I'll just throw this out there. If, if people are really that down on Austin Rivers, man, if I'm Doc Rivers, I'm choosing one of those picks and I'm grabbing my son. Now, does he drop that far? I don't think in the end he will because there's clearly a lot of talent to be had there. He needs another year at college, if you ask me. Yeah. Whether he does that or not, I don't know. Now, so, is that a good deal for both of them as far as playing, him playing under his dad or his dad coaching his own son? Is that a good deal for, for either of them as far as the, the chemistry? Oh, it causes all sorts of problems, but there are problems that I'd be willing to take because I think the kid is talented mm-hmm. enough. I mean, I, I always tell this story, and I'll tell it one more time. Once I was waiting for Doc to do a story on Doc, and, and, and Rhonda was a young player at the time, and, uh, and, and Austin Rivers was in the eighth grade. Okay, so I'm sitting there, I'm waiting for Doc, I'm bored. Rondo's got his shirt off, because he loves to have his shirt off so everybody could see how strong he is. And And he has a tattoo on his back. He's taking shots, okay? No one's guarding him, he's just taking shots. So I'm bored, so I'm counting. Takes 100 shots, he makes 60. Not very good when nobody's guarding you. That's pretty bad. There's a little kid over there shooting away, his son, in the 8th grade, same, doing the same drill, makes 79. <laughs> he comes out, I comes out and I said to Doc, I said, man, you got a problem. Your eighth grader shoots better than your NBA point guard. Wow. Did he agree with that? Did he say, yeah, yeah he was that laughing. is an he issue? Laughed. Sports Radio WEEI, now on 93.7 FM in Boston.